See, it still hasn't pinged. According to this, we're 10 seconds in. Oh, I've got the ping. We're here. There is a delay on the internet. But the time this goes through the NSA computer and comes back again and checks, we are talking about Capitol Hill, Capitol Hill, Capitol Hill. Uh, we need to drain the swamp, John. <laughs> do uh, Yeah. We would we would drain the swamp, except we would build a moonshine uh, equipment somewhere in the swamp to hide it from the alcohol, tobacco, and firearm people, wouldn't we? <laughs> oh, Justin, wait, I tell you, out of all the dysfunctional parts of government, the tax revenue collection never fails. It, <laughs> it's the Pony Express; it never lets you down. It always comes. I already pay a ta- I already pay a tax bill this year, even though I've earned no money, <laughs> pretty much in a year. I've earned nothing. I still had to pay tax because they overpaid me a rebate two years ago. I so, know. I'm lucky uh, my registered address is in the Isle of Man, so listen, I, I, I don't worry about it. Listen, <laughs> now if you believe that, you believe anything. So listen, what's happening tonight, because it's a big night tonight, because it's, it's a really live show tonight. It's a big night tonight. We have our usual news feature. We'll have a bit of general banter and chat as usual. And then we are having... Uh, an interview with Jamie Cotter, who's the brand manager from Hinch, which is prob- probably the newest. I'm just thinking if it's now the newest operational distillery, because it's only, it's only really started their distilling a few weeks ago, really. We mentioned it a few weeks ago in the show. So it'd be nice to get speaking to Jamie and find out what's going on up in Ballin' Hinch direction. Okay, so we're looking forward to that. And uh, have your questions ready. Uh, Jamie Cotter standing by. Remember to comment, like, and share on Facebook and on uh, YouTube as well. Irish Whiskey Review. Uh, if you go on Irish Re- Whiskey v- Review, make sure you hit the uh, subscribe button. It is free and hit the bell, and then you'll get notified every time we go live. But it's usually the main show, Saturday. 10 p.m. So thanks for coming along. We'll give people a mention tonight. Don't forget to mention our new podcast. Oh, right. Yes, I forgot about that. I forgot about that. We have a new podcast. Yes. It's on Wednesdays. Yeah. It usually goes up. It's about half an hour long. What did we talk about in the in the, the, the premiere issue there last Wednesday morning? We talked about indigenous spirits. So we brought up a little bit about, uh, about poaching. Uh, because there's a big focus on the growth of Irish whiskey, and, and for perfectly logical and good reasons. But poaching is also uh, made by by the distilleries, and it's an indigenous Irish spirit. So I think in some ways that's a bit neglected. Uh, where Irish whiskey starting from a very low place, hitting big, poaching's essentially starting from zilch zero. And um, well, it's worth talking about. So it was nice. Okay, so have a listen to that. You get it where you get all your podcasts. Same again, Irish Whiskey Review, or you can go to the main site, which is Anchor FM. Now, uh, a big week in whiskey, because you've been checking out the annual report, haven't you? Yes, Justin, we start the news tonight with the Drinks Ireland Irish Whiskey Annual Report was published this week. Um, It's a number of really interesting figures and facts. Anna. Stated last year, Irish distilleries distilled 100 million litres of pure alcohol. Now, that's not whiskey. You have to remember it gets diluted before it gets cast and stuff. So it's it's always measured in LPA or litres of pure alcohol. So 100 million litres of, of alcohol was distilled. That's 40 Olympic sized swimming pools. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, so also said that there's 3.1 million casks of whiskey maturing on the island of Ireland as we currently speak. That's a lot of stuff. When you consider where we were to where we are now, 3.1 million barrels is phenomenal. It isn't half. It's a, it's a hell of a lot of stuff. Um, it's, it's a huge amount of stuff. Huge amount of stuff. Now, Irish whiskey is currently the fastest growing spirit category in the past decade. And it's grown 140 percent in 10 years now this there's a list up there these are all the distilleries because not all distilleries are part of this uh these are all the distilleries that are part of the irish uh the drinks ireland or the irish whiskey association so these you see obviously there we have uh all the big irish name players including the hench here today 
But you'll also notice William Grant and Son and WDW. These are the Scotch guys who are in on the Irish whiskey scene now too, and really putting a lot of money into it. So it's uh, yeah, it's it's growing at a huge rate. It's actually been growing at over nine percent compound per year for the last ten years. I mean, that's that's huge growth. Huge growth. That's massive. Growth, the second money. How, how have they managed to achieve that? Well, the thing is, Justin, it's, it, it's Ireland had that reputation for whiskey, but it didn't actually produce very much. You know, as I've said many times before, lots of people thought there's all these different distilleries and brands all over the place in Ireland because they had powers and paddies and bush mills and so on and so forth. But actually, they weren't making very much. Lots and lots, very few people were actually drinking it on any scale, certainly outside Ireland. So really what they've done is a huge amount of work, lots and lots of government backing. And, and they've, they've really got their act together and just the huge investment that's been put into it. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions, uh, euros and pounds have been pushed in. So now the key us, numbers there. Talk us through some of these key numbers because... I mean, you compare it with the Japanese whiskey market, uh, uh, the gin market, and the yeah. rum market, and vodka, which is we're we're, we're going to have glens of and vodka soon. <laughs> Apparently so. Apparently, potato vodka. Uh, vodka is actually one of the few spirits that's actually declining in sales because for a very long time people made uh, vodka cocktails. Vodka essentially is water and ethanol. There's not really supposed to be any flavour of it at all. Uh, that's the way it's distilled. The reason people will pay big money for uh, the likes of your grey goose, etc., cetera, et cetera, is really because it's to do with the mouthfeel, it's the quality of it. But essentially, you buy vodka, certainly in the West, you buy vodka to put something in it, your vodka and Cokes and your vodka and, and uh, orange juice, that kind of thing. But people are moving away from that and actually going from the white spirits through gin, which has been a huge growth uh, at spirit too, now over to the brown spirits. So you have your whiskies and also your rums. Uh, now you'll notice the second highest growing category in that is Japanese whiskey, which sells probably twice as much as Ireland or near enough twice as much as, as Ireland does. But Ireland's rapidly growing. And there's a graph there that predicts that by 2029, Ireland will be selling more whiskey than Scotland. Yeah, I, that, I, 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 I would find I mean, that, that. That's like one's going one yeah. way and one, one's going the other. Yeah, I. you have to remember, Justin, that Scotland really have a century head start on Ireland. Uh, we have a huge amount of room uh, room. To, to grow but to say that you're going to overtake the scotch whiskey industry in nine years from now i i think that's very optimistic but i'm not saying it's not possible but it's very optimistic the one thing that me and you will be looking at in this figure is that <laughs> that visitor numbers for 2018 had put, surpassed a million visitors to distilleries mm. so our tourist trade when it comes back again Course, and me and you can get gainful employment. Uh, there'll be a million. Hopefully, we'll get back to that sometime in the not too distant future. I'm looking forward to that day. I, I, def I definitely oh, am. Please, yeah. God. Uh, it'd, be, uh, it'd be nice if me and you could actually get a day's work. <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> day, it, it would be, but we're doing our best to keep people entertained on this lockdown. Uh, so, yeah. listen, yeah. We, we, we've got Jamie Carter standing by. Remember, if you if you want to ask Jamie Carter mm -hmm. a question, type it in here on uh, Facebook or on YouTube, Irish Whiskey Review. Um, he, he's there. So we're, we're whizzing our way through this uh, sort of whiskey sort of uh, annual report. Uh, is that the report over, is it, Marty? Yeah. Uh, the report, if anybody wants to see it, is available at the Drinks Ireland Irish Whiskey. Uh, you can go and have a look at it yourself. But we'll move on, and we'll talk about the government giving ten million. I'm away. I'm away. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here if we're talking about that. <laughs> the government is dishing out more money. <clears throat> now, the whiskey distilleries are not part of the excluded 
that seem that are on the TV all the time now. Explain, trying to explain to the government uh, how people like like ourselves really have fallen through the the crack the, the, the cracks in the system and haven't had any state help. But uh, good news: the government is given ten million pound to help whiskey distilleries go green and cut their CO two by a million tons a year, which is the equivalent of two hundred thousand cars. So the aims to switch to cleaner fuels such as hydrogen. And 17 distilleries received funding this week with the aim to becoming net zero carbon. So the Green Distilleries Fund is an important step to reaching zero CO2 emissions, said Dagmar Drugsma of the Scotch Whiskey Association. So good news. Uh, sure. We encourage this kind of thing. Surely that's just posi positioning. That That's appealing to the Green Lobby. No, well, Justin, the thing about it, whether it appeals to the Green Lobby, it's actually a practical thing. Uh, I say I keep saying this: the only people that can fix these problems are industry and businesses, uh, and unless there's a, a help or financial uh, method of doing these distilleries, look, the likes of Diageo aren't really going to worry about uh, you know a, a, a fifty thousand pound grant. But some of the smaller distilleries, uh, I mean, I don't know, Edward or something. Like that, the fifty thousand pound helps them move across from from their uh, oil fired stills to to hydrogen, maybe even down to natural gas. All of this cleans the thing, and it's, it's this is to be encouraged. A wee, a wee quick touch of hands for uh, coming up with this scheme. So the green whiskey scheme. I, I even like the sound of that. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know about that. Uh, I, I, I think it's a, a bit uh, positioning myself, but uh, who knows? Who knows? My, uh, where are we heading to hey, next? I, I, we're going across to the wonderful island of Sky, or I, I love Isla Sky. I'm sort of thinking of Bonnie Prince Charlie. And we're going to talk about Lafroig. Now, Lafroig released an advert on TV. It got a complaint to the Advertising Standards Agency. Someone complained about this. Now we'll play the advert and then we'll give it a few seconds and let people guess to see if they can tell what the complaint was. Okay. So play, the, play the video. Here we go. Lafroy? Lafroig. Lafroig. Hello. I think I love you. Is that it? That's it. Now, I know you know because I told you earlier on in the week, but uh, can any of our guests, any of our listeners, watchers, tell me what the complaint about that advert would be? It's a crap advert. I've got, it's not the best advert. It's not something that broke my world. There's a clue in that. Okay, no idea. <laughs> <laughs> the complaint was made, and I read this out because it is a bit long one, but it's good. The complaint challenged whether the ad was irresponsible because it linked alcohol to sexual activity. And it portrayed alcohol as indispensable. I, I think right. Jimmy. I think Jimmy's <laughs> laughing at that. I can see him, but he doesn't realise I can see him when he's off screen. Uh, there's no nothing right. sexual in that uh, video whatsoever. The ASA said, and I, I had to write this down as a direct quote: "We considered that the overall impression of the ad was that it was an illustration of the different reactions people had encountered with a distinct taste for the first time, and did not imply any link between." Drinking Lafroy whiskey and sexual activity, sexual success, or seduction. Because of that, we concluded that the ad did not link alcohol with sexual activity, sexual success, or seduction. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, how, how horny would you have to be to think that that was 
that that was in some way promoting sexual activity. I mean, I mean, it's just bizarre. Well, Absolutely at least, bizarre. They actually at, take this seriously. At least they didn't uphold it. At least they didn't uphold it. Uh, no, they, this 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 next one sounds like something I would do. I mean, I, I would maybe buy something expensive like uh, a laptop and leave it on a tube train. Would you do this? Oh. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm Justin, I'm from Balamina, remember. I know that copper wire was invented in Balamina <laughs> whenever someone argued over a two pence piece. <laughs> I, double glazing was invented in Balamina to keep the sound out so the Wayans couldn't hear the ice cream man. <laughs> 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 I haven't now, heard that one before. This is Sterling. Sterling in the Daily Record reported this week that a business executive was left red face after leaving a two thousand pound bottle of whiskey behind him. The CEO sent an assistant from London to retrieve the bottle. Now, this is a CEO of a major company. He's left a two thousand pound bottle of whiskey, and guess where he's staying? Uh, hold on, the travel hold on. lodge. Uh, oh. Yes, I guess correctly, a travel lodge. Yeah. <laughs> the travel lodge. Not a thing wrong with the travel lodge. It's just not necessarily this place that you would think people would leave £2,000 bottles of whiskey. But the travel lo lodge on the Gooscroft Road also said that it had recovered a doctor's kit bag full of all these instruments and scrubs. So he'd have been, some, he'd have been a lot of use turning up at the... Uh, <laughs> at the well, at surgery. Well, I happen to know the price of it. A, a stethoscope is three thousand pound. Okay, so that would have been oh. worth more than uh, a bottle of whiskey. Uh, but you can't drink a stethoscope. Just no, <laughs> you can't no, drink a stethoscope. No, you, you can't. I'm stethoscopes afraid. are to heal other people. Whiskey's to heal yourself. You know. Okay. So. Yeah. They also just they also had to wake a groom. <laughs> so he wasn't late for his wedding. He slept in for his wedding. Which kind of tells you how excited he was by the whole day. He said the guy slept in for his own wedding. And they also had to recover the re uh they joined a magician with his top hat and his rabbit. <laughs> he left his rabbits in the hotel room. Here, as long as he didn't leave oh. Debbie McGee behind, we're all right. <laughs> Nothing wrong with Debbie McGee. She was great on strike mate. Yeah. You don't watch that nonsense. Wash you? your mouth out. Of course, I watch it. I never miss an episode of it. When, when you see the, the absolutely heavenly Oti Mabusi running up those stairs to get her scores, it's a thing of utter joy, Justin. A thing of utter joy. Who, who, you can like that. You say it's like that. Who's Oti Mabusi? Oti's the two time uh, winner of Strictly. She won it this year with Bill Bailey. Okay, whatever you, you say, whatever you say, whatever you say. Cultural bring, phenomenon. Bring back Dallas. That's what I say. Oh, bring back! I love Dallas as well. Jr. There was a question in the chase the other day. It was about obscure. It was uh, which star was born? Which star of Dallas was born on the seventeenth of March, nineteen forty-nine? Yeah, Patrick Duffy. I've seen it myself. I, I didn't think they were up to much in that beat the chasers. It'll be interesting to see if you make it on. If you fare any better. Why? Who knows, Justin? Who is, knows? Is it if I got on, I, I beat it, the big beastie boy. Is it time yet for Jimmy Cotter? We're, is it? No, it's not time yet. Be, we have one more story. One more story. Here we go. One more story. We're getting whiskey money, Justin. Actual whiskey money. Now, we have financial. Who? There's a lot of a graphic there with a trophy. Have have bought two and a half million dollars worth of Kentucky bourbon. Uh, but they're issuing digital tokens, which uh, which are really like shares, which investor will then be able to trade on the cryptocurrency markets. Now, right. I don't okay. really know a huge amount about cryptocurrency. I don't understand it, essentially because I'm a bit thick. But basically what it means is they're investing in the whiskey and then they're releasing a, a cryptocurrency based, backed by... The, the bourbon that they're buying. Now, the businessman behind this, the Waves Financial President, Benjamin Sai, said the tokenism is about putting the fractional ownership of the fund into the blockchain. When one barrel is sold, everyone is fractionally enjoying the capture volume. 
again, I don't really understand that because I'm a bit thick. But I know you know a bit about cryptocurrencies. Th these are bit? essentially anyone that doesn't know. They are they're basically non-governmental digital cash backed up by a blockchain, which is basically a digital ledger. But this this week, cryptocurrency market topped a trillion dollars. A trillion dollars. And Bitcoin was selling for above thirty-seven thousand dollars each, which it's just incredible. But it's a bit above me because I don't really, I, I, it's, it's I don't really understand it because I can't really it's, 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 pre it's pretty. It, it's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. So it's that yeah. time. It's the man we've been waiting six months to meet. Uh, Jamie Cotter is standing <laughs> by. Uh, I think we'll say hello to him if he's there. He is there. Evening all. How are we? <laughs> Cheers. Not bad, Jimmy. You're good stuff. I good can't self. complain. Uh, night for me. Oh, yeah. I think, think you're on the same as me. Oh, you're on the pot still. I'm on the uh, pita. No. No, I, I, no, I'm on the pita, buddy. I'm on the pita. I actually left it the wrong ball there. Uh, you're pita. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. But, uh, Jimmy, congr congratulations on everything that's been going on down at the Hinge. Uh, I, I got a little look around it last year when it was still a building site and uh, to actually get the work done during COVID is a bit, yeah. of a, a bit of a remarkable thing in and of itself. So give us uh, a bit about the hinge. How did it come about? Yeah. How did it get to where it is? And, and, and so on. Give me the story. So Hinch Distillery is the dream and passion of Dr. Terry Cross, OBE, um, and we're located nine miles just outside of Belfast, hence our name Hinch from the town of Balna Hinch. Uh, Terry acquired a chateau in 2000 called Chateau de la Lene, and since that he had always wanted to get into the next stage of alcohol, and what, what, what better way to create a distillery for whiskey and gin in your back garden? Knock down the horse stables, knock down the playing fields, and build a £15 million distillery literally in your back garden, Martin. If you'd been up, you would have seen it, and that's that's the man himself. That photo I actually took the night that we christened the stills. So our head yeah, distiller Aaron's just out of shot, and at about 11 p.m. I think it might have been, and um, we decided what we'll do: we'll bring Terry down from the house. And in Scotland, you might see distilleries where they like throw Heather into the still to christen it almost. We thought we'd have a bit of fun with it. We'd throw in a bottle of our five-year-old whiskey. Now, some people were like, "That was a waste of a whiskey," and we were like, "Listen." Got us a bit of traction, got us people talking about it. So, yeah, that was that was around mid-October, maybe. And as you touched on yourself there, we became the 36th official distillery in Ireland there on the 9th of November. So, New Mick, New Mick Single Malt basically laid down on the 9th of, 9th of November. So, yeah, 35,000 square foot. Um, and it is predominantly going to be a single malt distillery. Um, and the peat that you've got on the table there will play a big part in our distillery as well at the same time. But... Um, also a gin that we'll, we'll touch over there, ninth way of Irish gin, but um, as you work in tourism, unfortunately we haven't been able to open our visitor centre, so as much as we've got a distillery working, we've also got a visitor centre which is all going to be very much hands-on, not many TV screens, it's all going to be your tour guides talking you through and explaining it, um, and I think we've got a real state-of-the-art um, visitor centre. We've also got a bar and a restaurant to give back to the local community. We, we want it to be a central hub where people come to from far and wide, you know, carried off, uh, Balma, Hinch, Seinfeld, that sort of thing. And there's also a wedding venue at it as well. So it, it's an all-round visitor centre, distillery experience is the best way of putting it. It's a, it's a big space. I mean, it... A lot of people driving past will see the front of the distillery, you know, if they're heading down towards the morns and that kind of thing as well. They'll drive past and the front of the distillery doesn't look that big, but it goes out in a, in a, in a courtyard all the way yeah. around. And it's a, it's a big space. It's very, it's, it, it's, it's very deceiving from the front. When you're going past on the main road, it's very deceiving that you don't see how much depth there actually is. Um, and that's taken from the, that photo we've got on the screen here. Um, is t I think that's the one you've actually pinched with Santa in it, maybe, that photoshopped in there. Um, that's taken from the top of the courtyard at the steps where we've got our um, function room, number two. But as you can see, that's all our stills there, um, shining brightly, shall we say, that we've named after the Moor Mountains. So our wash still is named after Donner. Our intermediate still is named after uh, Sleeve Crew. And 
our spirit still is named after Wee Binion. Just a bit, bit of fun. Um, we're based in County Down, so we really want to hammer that home. And when we're talking to the likes of Americans or Europeans, you know, given that connection from the distillery to the locality in County Down, it's a very good connection for them. It's certainly quite catchy. I think it, it, we're, yeah, it really is. Sorry. Sorry, I dropped off, Marty. Your audio dropped off there, Marty. Justin just said. Justin just said that uh, it was quite catchy. Oh, ah, Marty, your audio keeps dropping for me. It's quite a catchy thing to do the three different names of the stills to the Morn yeah. Mountains. That that will that will stand out for a lot of people. There there was talk, Justin, that we were going to name them after Terry's kids. Um and then it you know, it, it's been done before. Um and when we looked at the names of stills in Ireland and we just went around it and because we do want to hammer that country dying story home, we thought, well, it's just the best option to do it. So when you come into this that we now um, I've just commissioned some photographs there off the more mountains to show. So like, you know yourselves as tour guides, when people come across, they want to see, well, what does that actually refer to? So we have some nice scenery photographs off the more mountains that can be connected to it. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Marty. Yeah. Can you can you hear me now, Jamie? Yeah, I think it's just the, the internet up in the glens might not be the best. Uh, that, this is a recurring problem. Uh, <laughs> I have a long running battle with PT. It's been going on for about three months. I think I'm victorious, but no. Um, now, the site, as you say, it, it, it's on a very prominent route from Belfast. If you're heading, if anyone's heading to the Morn, so coming out of Belfast, heading south, essentially, uh, you've got a, a real sort of catchment area there for people to come. Justin and, it's, it's, as I, and I work in those tour guides. It's a, it's a great location for coaches just to come up and then stop, have a quick visit. You can even have a quick visit or a long visit or stop in for tea, coffee, and head on. It's a, I think it's a great site great site for it. So for, for us, um, we're exactly like nine miles directly from. If you take it from the city centre of Belfast, it's nine miles to our front door. And as you touched on, it's the main arterial route from Belfast mm -hmm. out to the mountains of Mourne. You have to go past our distillery to get out to one of Northern Ireland's biggest tourist attractions, the Mourne Mountains. So, and as you touched on, coaches... That's part of what I'll be playing at um, next year when, fingers crossed, the sense of normality comes back that we have the tourism back. We have the facility to bring coaches into our front car park. At the minute, when you look at our distillery to the left-hand side, we're currently building a coach car park. Um, and we're working with the likes of Trans, like that sort of thing, to get a bus stop out the front of our distillery that it gives people that might not be on a coach tour, but can jump on the 18 bus out to Newcastle and jump off at the actual distillery. But you, again, yourself, a big target for me is the cruise ships that come into Belfast, the numbers that come in, get put on a coach, get sent up to the Northwest, and they spend the majority of their day up there and they don't get to see much more else. Why not bring them 20 minutes down the road to Balnehinch, the Hinch Distillery, and they get to see an Irish whiskey distillery, still that they are modern. It's a, it's a no brainer for the tourism sector. Does, does the city bus not go out nearly I, as far as there, Jamie? No, the city bus uh, stops just where I am, um, four winds just outside, carried off. So the red route won't go out. You're, you're on the old uh, countryside uh, Translink blue bus at that rate, you know. Right. It, it's, it's, it, it's, there's about four buses maybe that go past that to get out to that direction. We've been asked a very good question there. Will you be able to bring your camper van there? Can you, are you going to have pitches and tents or stops or anything like that? At the minute, no. But, it, you know, that, that's something the foreseeable future that could potentially be added on, all depending on what way tourism works at the minute. Um, you know, like, listen, I'll not say no to it, but if somebody was to contact us and say, listen, we want to pitch up tonight because we're doing, like, say, a whiskey trail around County Down, I'm not going to say no, probably. All right. Well, I, th I think we you might be on the list of one of the trips that Marty might organise once this all lifts. Once you're allowed out again. When, when, once we're all allowed back out again, and Arlene, Arlene and Michelle aren't going to uh, convict us, uh, at we'll least have to the be on trip for you. Uh, but like, that's where you're going to go. <laughs> that's that's, that's the, the difference, you know. Where are you going to go? <laughs> There's more to you go. Don't stand out no, the street and the uh, street uh, That's just uh, that's, I. I said to Justin just before we started this that uh, that this lockdown almost seems a little bit more repressive 
because it's darker early you know there's it's not the sunshine that we had in march and so on and so forth it just it just feels a bit more claustrophobic or something you know i think for this one it's very much a case of we knew the first one we didn't know what was coming down the line it was an holiday you know i was very lucky through the first lockdown i was able to still work so i was able to get out every day and go and do something to keep the brain ticking over and i i do feel bad for people who've had to work from home you know you're in the same four walls all day but this lockdown it's very much a case of we know what's happening you ain't doing anything you ain't going anywhere you're going to complete netflix this is that this i <laughs> let's see if you can finish netflix but uh, Justin's just put up a picture of your sort of core range. Now, if you yeah. want to talk us through your core range, what, what all's uh, available so, currently? Yeah, in, in that core range, what it was is obviously we, 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 a lot of people would obviously know Irish whiskey can be sourced. So Terry and Dighton spent £5 million pounds, um, on sourced whiskey, base spirit, whatever you want to call it, and then we've blended it together ourselves. So first up line, we have a small batch which is three years in bourbon casks, and it's 43% triple distilled. The natural aggression from the small batch then takes us into our five-year-old, which is a five-year-old double wood. So that's three years, uh, four years ex-bourbon and one year virgin American oak. So that they're both blends. And then we're into our 10-year-old cherry cask finish, which people uh, think might be a single malt. It's actually a blend at the same time. So that's 10 years in bourbon and then one year in, cherry, uh, in a cherry cask finish. You've also got your pot still, which is a nod to the Irish whiskey sector, is the best way of putting it. And then you've got your peated single malt, which nod to the Irish and Scots, because a lot of people don't think that there was peated whiskey in Ireland, but there had to be when the real roads weren't there and the infrastructure wasn't there. You had to use the turf out your front yeah. door is the best way of putting it. So peated, yeah, that, we've made a decision that peated is going to play a big part in our distillery. Wow, good. Uh, because I, I genuinely love your peat. I think it's super stuff. Uh, it's got enough peat to be a, a good kick of peat. It's got that lovely, uh, fresh, piney, le lemony. It's got a lovely nose to it. It's very, very yeah, well, I'm um, actually drinking it here at the minute. And I, I, have, I have the cash mm -hmm. rank to my left hand side as well, which you know might make an appearance down the line at some stage if I have my way about it. But for me, there's, a, there's almost a licorice that comes off it as well. It's it's lovely. It's really, really um, I think Marty's internet's went off again. We've got a few it? questions coming in here and friend of the show, Vic Cameron, who yep. says oh, Sorry. No, no, you're you're back now, so it dropped off on me. I'm breaking up my, my clockwork internet, I think. Okay, uh, I see our friend of the show, Vic Cameron, is uh, saying that your new expert is very interesting. I know Vic was over with you a, f a few weeks ago, and a great guy he is. But, uh, might not have been myself that took him around, it might have been Aaron that might have showed him around. Um, but yeah, um, we've had a couple of the a couple of the guys, the bloggers, shall we say, that have come up and tried it, and a couple of people have done it, and we're really happy with where it is. At the minute, we're not distilling. We've got a downtime here, January, February, just to tinker with a couple of things, and um, just to get it bang on. Well, I had a question in there from Canada as well, uh, yeah. asking, will, will you be exporting to the likes of Canada and uh, across the pond as well? So the answer to that, yes, we have been in Canada since this time last year. So we have on our distributor in Canada is Craftwork Spirits. So we've been in Canada, yeah, just over a year. And then we just signed a nice new deal there with um, Chopin Imports in America um, back in September. So currently we're in 16 states in, in America with Hinchar's Whiskey. And then our gin will follow in February here. Excellent stuff, Jamie. Marty. Yes, I, I, I keep sort of, there's a little bit of a delay and a bit of a breaking, so probably my internet, I would have thought. Uh, now, you've brought out a couple of uh, special releases. There was one finished in the, uh, the Chateau cask, the wine cask. 
think you've broken up a wee bit again, Marty. Listen, I, I caught that. I caught that there. It was the Shadow Dedaline wine cast for Terry. Um, and I'll just quickly answer that because I think I caught the end of it. Um, basically, Terry, for his 2018 Grand Reserve, that was the first time he's had it. And it made a no-brainer that what we would do is back, uh, but just over six months ago, we brought two of his casts over and filled it with 18-year-old bourbon. And it's going to be a part of a series going forward with Hinch. It's, just an, it's a really good connection between Terry's distillery and then his uh, chateau in uh, Bordeaux. Just let the internet catch up from Marty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely. That's a no-brainer. Um, I, I haven't got a chance to try that. Now, has the internet caught up for me, is it? It has. I can hear you, but you're, you're frozen up? on my screen for me. No, uh, uh, the picture there, that's Aaron, your distiller. Uh, do you want me to tell, you, do you want to tell us a little bit about his background? Yeah, so Aaron Flattery on the right here is a Belfast boy, uh, born and bred, that took himself off to Scotland uh, to the land where they don't use the E in the whiskey and spent 10 years working there for Diageo. So he went around quite a lot of the big distilleries in Diageo and then spent two years uh, with Diageo out in uh, Africa, in likes of Cameroon, that sort of thing, um, doing breweries out there. And Aaron then came home to work in the Diageo plant in Belfast and one of his friends couple of weeks into working at home, sent him an email going, here's this new distillery just outside Balma Hinch. Here's the list of everything that's being looked for. Surely that's exactly the dream job for you. And yeah, that's, you know, he's 13, 14 years in the business and now he's got his own, his own distillery to play with is the best way of putting it. You know, he's what, six miles from home, roll out of bed, roll into the distillery and get to make single malt every day. So he's one of these new young sort of that's people that's very enthusiastic about whiskey. Uh, like. Pardon? Wait for your internet to catch is up. It, uh, is it, he's one of the young people who's enthusiastic about whiskey. Just now, just now, I'm not getting Marty at all here, so I'm not. He, he, Marty was saying uh, what I was saying that uh, this guy's one of the new young people that's very enthusiastic about whiskey, sort of, sort of uh, rediscovering the old traditions of whiskey distilling. Aaron is a, a through and through authentic, has to be traditionalist is the best way of putting him. So, as my job as a brand manager, I'm wanting to go out and do all these lovely, obscure things and have all these class ideas, and then you go to Aaron and obviously he's the guy that's going to make it, and his response is, "I'm a traditionalist. It's got to be." single malt, high end. Basically what we want Hinch to become known as is when you pick up a glass of Hinch, as soon as you drink it, you know that that character is Hinch Distillery single malt. Now that's gonna be you know a core range that you pick it up and you go, it might be age statements, it might be finishing something different, or it might be completely aged from the start going through. And we're playing with a lot of things in the background. And like I have one here that is an experiment that I'm treating myself to tonight to try. And we want to be innovative, but at the same time, we still want to have that core value of traditional whiskey. Jamie, you wouldn't just hold that up higher so as I can see it in the mirror, what it says in the label. <laughs> You're not it actually, there's nothing not all right. the <laughs> between the grain and the malt. All right. Okay. Right. Uh, well, I will, sorry, I will say this. There might be a couple of people that are watching this so, that have tried it before. Okay. Oh, I see. That would Vic be one of them? Vic might be one of them. I know he was down trying a lot of stuff uh, whenever he was over. Uh, I, I've just seen a, a comment there that uh, Rodin's famous statue, The Thinker, is based on Marty. So I assume this is the pose that they're talking about. It's actually Bruce Forsyth that I copied. Bruce Forsyth. And for anyone who doesn't know, Bruce Forsyth is a legendary entertainer. <laughs> Not The Thinker. No, uh, so... I mean, it's a fifteen million pound project. There's a huge amount of money. What's the output uh, from from your stills? Because I mean, a lot of the distilleries that are opening at the minute are are, are quite small. You know, they're they're sort of craft distilleries. This isn't. This is bang. This is a big a big concern. So, what? How much whiskey can you make a, a year? 
currently it's going to be 400,000 400, LPA, but we do have the capacity to double that in the future if needs be. So Terry was a wise man when he built that. He went, you know, we're not going to go straight in at the high, high end, but we'll start here and then we'll ramp it up gradually. So 400,000 LPA, you know, you touched on, we're not craft, we're not boutique but we're not one of the big boys either. We're in that nice intermediate area where there's a gap to be filled. So 400,000 LPA per year isn't to be sniffed at, you know, and in whatever amount of years time, yeah. it will be ramped up to 800,000 if needs be. So it's, it's yeah. you know, at the minute, what, just, just before Christmas there, we've just shy of 250 casks filled. What percentage of it's going to be peated? This is a, a, I saw. So percentage it's heated, Justin. Um, I don't know what the just yet exactly what it is. At the minute, what we've worked on predominantly is getting laid down our Ankea Dune cask release program, 161 casks of it, get it laid down with single malt, and then we fill quite a lot of bourbon casks from Maker's Mark as well at the same time. And now January, February, we've taken a step back to slow it down, just to tinker with the distillery. You know, we've just done our commissioning. We pushed it really hard, but now it's just to refine everything where we can if needed. And at the minute, we are going to start commissioning our gin still as well. So we've done everything we've needed with the single malts. Now we're going to take a step back and go into the gin to get it going for our ninth wave brand. But Peated will probably play a part around June time, I'd say. Okay. Marty. Now, you have a, a, a cask buying program yep. at the minute. Uh, it's 161 casks, is it? 161. 161 if memory serves. Yep. Uh, do I talk about that for a little bit? Yeah, so basically, like a lot of the stories going forward, we do a cast program um, to bring it in, and we decided that we were going to do it, but we didn't want to do it in high, high numbers. You know, there's other distilleries that do 400, 500 casts. The 161 comes from Killian Estate, Terry's House, which is 161 years of age back in September. So when I was coming up with the cast program, I was rattling through my head what number we could go for and take it to Terry and go, this is the number that we're, we're going to sell. And he's like, 161, does it not need to be more? I'm like, no, 161 is a perfect number. There's a reason behind it. And then the Ankea Dune is Irish for the first down. So it's a bit of a play in words in Irish words. Um, it's the first spirit in County Down at Hinsa Stilly. So Ankea Dune, the first down. Um, not many left of the 161. I think there's about 30 left of them. Um, and it's five grand all in. So part of it, when I sat down to look at it was, I come from like the, you know, the geek, the bloggers sort of thing. And I, in my dream job was, I wanted to be a really good value for money. So that five grand is everything all in. Five years storage, your insurance, your bottling, your cork, your sales. It's everything bar having to pay the tax man his lovely duty, um, the HMRC at the end, unfortunately. So, you know, it's we, we kept it, we, yeah. we announced it. Um, a lot of people in Northern Ireland and a couple in the South have bought it, but there's a lot of international interest in it as well. So there has been. Yeah. So it's five five thousand pounds for the cask. What size is the cask? It's a two hundred litre bourbon. And one of the things that we've done was we went directly to Maker's Mark and had a chat with them and said this is what our plans were and why we were wanting to work solely with them. So most people would go and buy their cask through a third party. We got a, a 40 foot container sent directly from uh, Maker's Mark over, and that was that was one fun more morning, uh, offloading about 250 casks. All, all hands on deck. That's, that's actually manual work. Yeah. Listen, that, don't, don't for the majority of us, use a camera and take photos. <laughs> manual <laughs> <laughs> ah, Good man. That's, that's the smart move. I don't know my manual work when I work in Michelin. But uh, now I'm going to just because just whenever you mention Maker's Mark, I have Maker's yep. Mark sitting up here. Um, I th I think the sexiest of the bourbons. It's got that lovely sort of lipsticky red uh, wax on the top of it. That I mean, it stands out. It's, it's gorgeous. I'm not a big fan of bourbon as a whole, um, but I do, I do like Maker's Mark and the fact that you've actually named your bourbon distillery. The bourbon where you're getting your bourbon casks that's not very common you know there's not too many it, people mentioned where they get their bourbon casks from yeah it, it took a lot of it took a lot of work marty to get that signed off um a lot of emails and phone calls back and forth but when we explained the reason behind it and the maker's mark connection to county down the history there from the owner back and forth 
someone somewhere along the line at Maker's Mark, it just clicked with them and went, yeah, we need to be all over this. So, you know, if you get our cast program brochure in the brochure, there's two pages all about Maker's Mark, why we've used it. And, I did, you know, I think it's a very, very solid bourbon to work with. Well, I, 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 as I've said this a dozen to a hundred times in this show, that I'm not a huge fan of bourbon. It's a bit too sweet for me, but I really do like Maker's Mark and, and just the look of it, I think, appeals to you. And that, that visual, it's, it's just, it just stands out. It really does. Um, you, you, can't can't miss it it balls. you can't miss it on a shelf. You can't miss it on a shelf. And that has that has its own appeal uh, above and beyond any other thing. Now, I I, I stole a photo off your uh, Twitter page this week because it's uh, and you're in this. This is you and Noel Hanna. Yeah. <laughs> now uh, this is too much like exercise. For for us. This is too much like exercise, Marty. Uh, it's a lot of don't, exercise. don't mention the don't mention the e. Yeah, so okay. this, tell, tell us a, tell us about about this because uh, Noel is the first Irish man to climb K two, and he was the first person or part of the the team was the first person people to climb Burke Chang, which is a six thousand nine hundred and forty two meters high mountain between Nepal and Tibet, and they were the first people to stand on the top of that. So. Yeah. What's what's he doing next, and what's what's Hinch doing with him or for him? Or so basically, I, I've I've known Noel Hanna for quite a while now, and um, just from meeting him in the Moor Mountains, he's a local county down man from Jamore. So I got talking back to him um, mid October, and he had mentioned that there might be this opportunity where he would be late on the team to go to K two. And I went, well, you've you've already done K two. You were the first Irish person to climb K two. You know, first person from Ireland to Ireland to go up. up summit and descend k2 back in 2018 you know that's a hell of an achievement goes with jamie it hasn't been done yeah. in the winter before i went well it's the last mountain over eight thousand meters that hasn't been done in winter and he went yeah yeah so my little brain as like the brand manager marketing department of hinch went we could get on board with this could you picture him at the top of k2 in winter world record never been done with a bottle of hinch so Put a big presentation together and went leave it with me let me go and speak to terry and the big bosses went in and they bought into it straight away you know this guy had a scotch brand with him in 2018 and i went right we need to get rid of the scotch it needs to be your local county thing distillery let's get it going so yeah we had him dying at the distillery we sent him off with a couple of bottles and i have photos here from him at base camp with the Hinch whiskey ready to go and he has a little surprise for himself if he reaches the top. Now he's currently at base camp and he's acclimatizing. Uh, he got there on New Year's Eve and spent New Year's Eve with a ball of Hinch 10 year old right. and we've just been sent a photo yesterday morning from him so that'll go out on our social media for it. But it's just really just a case of the strap line that we have at Hinch is still, to still with a bold character is everything. And we want to tell the stories of the people that work at Hinch, but also local people from County Down. Let's tell their story as well. Let's get them on the world stage and go for it that way. So it just was a really good pairing to go for. There's your guy, stones through from the distillery, fingers crossed. Um, around Valentine's Day is looking likely when he might uh, go for a summit um, on K2. And if he gets it, he will be one of six, I believe to ever reach the top of K2 in winter. So it's one hell of an achievement. That, that, that's unbelievable. Yeah. So uh, and if, just, just, we'll give you, just get the top. Give me, if you give me two seconds, many. I'll try and hold this up to the phone and see if you can see it. Um, if I can quickly find it. And technology, I can't find it right now. That's always good. Don't worry, I tried to find a couple of I pictures told. there and I couldn't find them. And when you aren't looking for them, you can... The so, oh, look at this. This is him up the top. Hold on, I put that in solo. Yeah. This is, this that'll is go out on uh, Monday morning. That's him with a K2 in the background. Wow, that's scary. And I'm him 10 -year -old. So um, I, I, I kind of, fingers crossed, believe cool. it's probably the highest Irish whiskey in the world. Okay. <laughs> unless, you, unless you give Ellen one, go for it. Let's see what happens. 
Uh, but, uh, no, that, uh, that that's incredible. That's fabulous. But uh, all of this in County Down is really becoming a hotbed for Irish whiskey. Uh, there's yourselves. There's our Brandon down in Cologne, and Eklundfell. There's David Fionn in the Radman Estate. You know, it's really becoming yeah. a, a, a real nice whiskey area. And I think there's been talk a few times, I've had conversations with people before about a, a, a whiskey trail, uh, certainly in Northern Ireland, up in this part of the world. And County Town's really been getting that it's act together and pumping out a lot of stuff now, you know? Yeah, well, as I kind of joke now, it's the new distilling capital of uh, Ireland, shall we say, because six working distilleries at the minute, if Matt Darcy's and Yuri comes on board, mm -hmm. that's seven. And if the eighth ever comes yep. on board, which there is talk about it happening somewhere, um, I've caught wind of a distillery happening not too far from me here um, in the near future. That's eight. Mm -hmm. That's the highest there's ever been in any county in Ireland. You know what I mean? So, like, as you said, you can leave Belfast, you can head out to Orange Peninsula, you can do two distilleries there, you can come across on the Strangford Ferry, and you could at least do two on the way back. And if you want to head down towards the Moor Mountains, there's potential to do two at the minute and a third on its way. So it's it's a hotbed of Irish whiskey. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it is really... It's almost getting to be like a, a region within the region of Ireland. You know, County Down is standing out. I mean, the Morns, etc. Uh, all the other ones that I, I didn't mention there. But there's a, a sort of tendency in my head to always categorise people into that all sort of groups and um, i know that there's there's a really good camaraderie between irish whiskey a lot of people have it in their head that irish whiskey distilleries are always go they're going to be in competition but that's not really the way the irish whiskey industry is they, the people have a laugh and a joke at each other but they are actually really supportive of each other it's it's an incredible thing it really is yeah we're we i'm super lucky that like before I stepped foot in Hintz's story, I was, what do you want to call it? An influencer, a blogger, whatever you want to call it. I spent six years working with distilleries and photographs, sort of thing, but I built up some very good relationships with distillery managers and brand about that sort of thing. And when Hintz was coming on board, you know, it's not easy. You're going to get things wrong and you're going to have to pick the phone up and get advice. But like we picked the phone up to Shane and Jarlath Thang at And an hour later, we're at their door having a meeting, getting advice off them. The same with the guys down at Short Cross. That's not, it's, we're all in this business together to push Irish whiskey forward. And obviously, for the past year, I haven't done any traveling. But the year before that, I traveled the world preaching about Irish whiskey. And one thing I'll always do is, and I'll, I'll openly say it, if you're not a fan of ours, I'm going to make sure you go to the nearest Irish whiskey stand beside me and drink theirs. Because the last thing I want you doing is walking away not drinking yeah. Irish whiskey. So it's all very much a case of we're in this together. And you said by 2029, that we potentially could go past Scotch. I have a big if around that. You know, it might happen at some stage. I don't see it being 2029, 20, but we're all in this together and we'll all push it forward in the best of it. That's it. I mean, I've said this lots of times too, that a rising tide lifts all ships. If the whole brand of Irish whiskey is helped by everybody, everybody benefits, you know, and it's, it's, it's a great thing to be part of. You know, people I, I totally are so, so friendly and one. funny. You know, yeah, it really is. It's a, they're fabulous people. Now, do we have any questions? We have some stuff coming up on the feed there. If Justin wants to have a quick look at it, I, I think he's managed to answer a lot of the questions that have that have come up there. Uh, somebody was asking about the. Do you think it'll get to the point where Ireland has regions like Scotland? Um, I have thought about this long and hard, and there's pros and cons to it. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't think we're anywhere near it just yet. Um, in the next five or six years, there's going to be a lot of dissolute that comes out of these new distilleries, which is going to tell you all about the character. At the minute, what you're trying to remember is there's, what, three or four distilleries that were pumping the whiskey out, and we don't hide about it. ROC comes from two distilleries. GND and another in the Northwest that I've been told I'm not allowed to describe, but we all know where it comes from. So I'd say 
when all these distilleries have their own character out there, true own character, you might get a regional variation. You know, once like you take a, something from Dingle that's out now, we know what their character's like. Copeland, when they bring theirs out, two distilleries, same kind of size, by the sea, what's the difference going to be? It would be, uh, I, I, like, I like peated whiskies. Uh, I've quite a fondness for them. And I could see a, a bit more peated stuff coming up uh, in the north. Um, I see James yeah. Dockery on there. Uh, I know that they're quite keen on doing peated stuff. And the dark silky is fa fabulous stuff too. Uh, so yeah. maybe a bit more of a, a bit more peated in the north and, you know, a bit more of your, your port casks down, down towards Dingle, you know. Like uh, if you take more, it, a bit well, more of your sherry past, stuff down there and the PT stuff towards yeah. us, you know. In the past year and a half, two years, I, I, I like when Hinch released their Peter um, Peter Single Malt back in June of 2018 when we first went to market with it. There was no other Peter Single Malt out at that point. The only other one was Connemara, who had the game for how many years? How many years has Connemara been on the market? Yeah. We come out with that. I'm sure, it must be then you've seen the yeah. healing that come out with stuff, you know. There's all these distilleries now which are all pushing the Peter Singham up because it was part of Irish whiskey history and it's now making a resurgence. Um, people, it, it's, it's it lovely, lovely stuff. I couldn't agree more. I, I I know a couple of people, one in particular, who absolutely raves about Hinch Peter. Uh, she absolutely adores this stuff. And do you, do you send to Texas? Um, you said they're available in. 15 no, states did you say 15 seconds we're in we're in 16 states across america at the minute but no it's not in texas um if i could pull up my second screen i'll probably tell you when it's going to be there so it will be in texas <laughs> in not going to be not anytime soon it looks like it's going to be july before it gets into texas so it's what happens well, in america a, is our a, we had this in so many states but there's other states you just have to go through a lot of formalities to get into but the big thing for us what a week ago was yeah. announced that 700 mil bottles are now allowed into america which you know for our size of the distillery is absolutely yes. fantastic it means not running secondary bottles and it means not having to do um extra labels yeah i i i read this out on the news last week or the week before about american standardizing the 700 mil bottle and, and I try to emphasize just how important that is to, to sort of new start businesses. Now, what I will say is there was quite a lot of money spent on this bottle. This, yeah. this isn't cheap. No. You know, uh, it's a, it's, it's I think, like, I think if you've I got it, from the, it's a bespoke bottle, you know, it's a bespoke cork. It's a bespoke bottle. It's got embossing on yeah. the top and then it's got debossing on the bottom. So one thing that we wanted to do, um, was we wanted to not just get an off the shelf bottle. It had to be something that yeah. complemented the whiskey in the bottle as well as the distillery. You know, this, this is where we're going. This will give you a slight indication to what our own bottle will look like when we put our own distillate in it. Yeah. So it, it's a pretty thing. I, I was talking about this bottle. I was talking about this very bottle on one of the earlier shows and I was trying to, again, tell people, all of this stuff costs an awful lot of money. Especially, it, it costs a huge amount just to design the stuff, never mind actually produce it. And the investment that, that Terry has put into Hinch, and I know he's had a little bit of support, not a huge amount of support really from, from the government. I mean, he's put a huge amount of his own money into this. So obviously he has huge faith in it. Yeah, it's, Terry doesn't do things by halves is the best way about, about it. You know, his previous company, Delta Print and Packaging, you know, that, that's where he made his name. Um, he's done it. He's got the yeah. chateau, and you know he does a lot for charity and all as well. There, there's no half. And, excuse my friends. There's no half hour in it It's it's all committed. or just don't do it at all. And that's where it makes my job very easy. When I come with an idea yeah. for products or whatever it may be, if you present it to him in a way where it's solid, it's a tick. It's go with it. He wants this distillery to be the big name of Irish whiskey, and you know we're making a racket already in our first year. We're just. Just done it there on the 9th of November, and you know it, he will want to be making a name for, us, for himself. You know, once we get this tourist center open, yeah. you know we're going to have people coming from far and wide. 
Oh, absolutely. And whenever people do come, you you want them to see the best of where where we are. Because for so long, for so long, and as Justin will tell you, people come with an, an idea, pre, sort of preconceived idea of, of Northern Ireland. And when they get here, it's our job to send them away thinking, wow, what a place, you know, fabulous. So we, you know, you want them to have the best of everything. And, and I think you can quite obviously see that Hinch, the money that has been invested, the, the, the attention to detail and lots of stuff and the quality and the quality of the product. I mean, when it's all said done, it has to go in your mouth and taste good. And as I say, I think I think the peat it's uh, I'm a, a fan of the pot still as well, but I think the peat it just is, is superb. Yeah, the peat it made a name for us anyway. You know, it's it's if you go on to Twitter on a Friday and a Saturday night, half the people are drinking it, which you know puts a smile on my face as a brand manager that the people the, the name of Hinch and the products are getting out there. And I'm not getting shot up by Terry 24-7. <laughs> it's a bit like me with Justin. Justin shouts at me all the time off screen. He's, he's a <laughs> bit of a taskmaster, you know. Sometimes feel like that wee man and, and Breaking Bad. You know the wee boy that was chained to the thing that had to make, keep making the, the, the blue stuff? That's the way Justin works me. <laughs> Listen, if you're not getting shot at you're not doing it right. Well, this is that. Is it? It could be worse. You could listen to him. Uh, you know, you have to listen to Terry. Terry's at least paying you. Justin doesn't pay me. He hasn't. Yeah. True. <laughs> the, word, the thing is, he's it's not in the office next true. to me. So it's even more fun. I'm in the fire now. Well, it's yeah. been great having yeah. you on. Yeah, Jimmy. that's a good I and a bad thing. I think we've we've covered all the bases here, Marty, tonight, haven't we? I think so. If, if, if anybody has anything else they want to throw in, any of the, anybody watching, feel free to push that up. Yeah, we, we've kept it good this week. We haven't slagged any towns in Northern Ireland this week. There's always time. There's always time. There's yeah. always time. I can always edit that in. <laughs> I, I can always edit that <laughs> if in. I say, if I say the word learn, we can make our exit quickly. <laughs> Learn <laughs> always gets a kick in. But uh, no, That's it's not been a pleasure. Bit. And when when we get, when we get back to some sort of normality, we'll try and organise and get ourselves all sorted, and we'll come down and pay you a visit, and I'll, you can show us around. But it, it's an extremely impressive place, as I say. I got when it was obviously it was still a building site, and it is it's it's an impressive place and. The, the the plans for I haven't seen it since it's been finished, but the plans look amazing. They look absolutely beautiful. So thank you very much for joining us, and uh, we will be in touch again sometime soon. I hope. Perfect. Take